Sunset on Mount Athos. The sun was sinking in the west. Mornings on Mount Athos are fragrant, charming. The darkness of the night is dispersed while the monks are at the Catholicon, the main church of the holy monasteries, singing glory to thee who has shown us the light. One could say that the sweetest melodious voices, the gentle sounding gongs and the warm rhythm of the Talanda drive the darkness away. And the afternoons on Mount Athos are also peaceful. A day of struggle has passed, and night is spreading its veil now. The monk will hide within its many battles, abundant tears, and a lot of spiritual exercises. Assessis. The sun falls, but the sunlight which exists in the hearts of the ascetics is not extinguished. A ceaseless luminous day exists in their all-pure hearts, without the clouds of passions. O oh, the sunsets of Athos, sunsets full of charm, full of grace, wrapped up in silence. After Vespers a few athletes, which are the monks, in a slow-moving manner with their faces bent toward the earth, come out of the Catholicon of the holy monasteries, or out of the small chapels of their abodes into the open air for some rest. They sit on a bench made of stone and meditate on the prayer, on the sweetest name of Christ. They want and they insist on inscribing it in their hearts, in gold, the peaceful letters. I am carried away by these hours of tranquillity, when even nature is calm and only the sea is heard sometimes playing on the rocks, when the king's sun paints the sky in every colour. Nature on Athos has a special charm, which is the radiance of prayer and holiness. The uncreated grace indeed passes through the soul to the body and spreads even to non-rational nature, to all creation. Nothing is fierce, everything is calm. All night and all day Athos is consumed in prayer. Even nature itself is tamed by the beautiful voices of the monks, the sweet-sounding gongs and by obedience. Nature does not attract me much, yet the nature of Athos has a special grace. It might be that one sees it through the perspective of the God-bearing monks and becomes illumined. It might be that one sees it not through the eye or the mind, but through the deified heart. And the heart knows how to love and how to appreciate things. It might be that quietness, in its fullest sense, plays a very significant part, since, according to St. Gregory Palamas, life which is without anxieties because of its hope in God moves naturally toward an understanding of the creation of God. Ascending to my own table Sunset on Athos, while the sun was about to set, I was ascending in order to rise. The setting of the sun found me climbing with great difficulty a narrow and steep path towards the east. For in faith we find it very hard with such a sense a delight to the faithful who have carried out their heroic decision to renounce the world with all its attractions and pleasures who have embraced asceticism. I was climbing somewhere on the north side of Athos. I wanted to put into practice the words of St. John Chrysostom. While your desire is still warm, go away towards these angels and make it warmer. For the words of men won't be able to fire your heart as the sight of heavenly things can. On the right and left, impenetrable rocks with their sharp peaks were raised as if they were piercing the sky, like the voices and lives of the dwellers of Mount Athos do. I was walking bent over, the Jesus prayer on my lips, in my heart and within my nous. For this is the way one should visit the holy mountain, having the feeling of a simple pilgrim. A short distance away from the path among the rocks one could see small houses which are the cells of the hermit monks. Some of them are within caves, others protrude a little, and you think when you look at them they will fall into the sea. It is within these small caves that the spiritual bees live, making the sweetest honey of Isihia. 
The hymn which Saint Nicodemus composed for the Athenite fathers came to my mind, and I started chanting it. O honeycomb assembled by God, who has hidden in the hollow places and caves of the holy mountain, as if in spiritual cells, the very sweet honey of Isichia. Similar cells exist on the south side of the mountain known as Garulia. There the spectacle is incomparably more amazing. On the reddish surface of the rocks which gives the appearance of being coated with rust, many dwellings hang together at the summit at a terrifying height. Some of them are caves with their entrance obstructed by walls allowing only for a small door. Elsewhere a small projection of the rock has enabled a brave hermit to build a small chapel with a dome, one or two cells and a tiny garden from which a wonderful forest of evergreens has flourished from soil transported from another location, giving an exotic view to the landscape. The pure colour with which all these hiding places are coated adds to the impression that they look like seagulls' nests. The ascetics communicate among themselves on paths which are not visible from the sea. Climbing them, however, is a very bold decision. Many of the ascetics have not come out of their narrow courtyard for years. That is why there are small graveyards in the more spacious of hermitages and cemeteries, in the caves where the relics of the brothers are kept. On the forehead of each of the skulls, the name of the brother is inscribed as well as the date of his death. These spiritual seagulls, the doves of heaven who experience God and ascend up to the third heaven, are scattered on the right and left. Anyone who ascends that narrow path on the north side of the mountain, which I was climbing at sunset, notices the same spectacle, and it makes him tremble. He feels the grace of God cooling him, but at the same time consuming him like Moses' burning bush. His memory brings to mind scenes of preceding fathers who passed by that place and now sleep in peace and quietness, waiting for the voice of the archangel, for the coming of the bridegroom to whom they will be wedded. Undeniably his heart is far from the world and all its pleasures. They had been fighting here for a whole lifetime so that they could find peace, and they found peace. They rest now in the bosom of Abraham. The voice of Christ, he is not dead, but he is sleeping, resounds loudly in those remote places. I was ascending with special thoughts and feelings. Quietness was predominant in the area. Once in a while you would hear some wild birds flying above and chirping, or even nightingales singing. Our thoughts feeds many beautiful nightingales. Now and then sounds of dull thuds could be heard. As I went on, I reached a small house, and there I saw a peaceful hermit who was trying to break up a big rock. Your blessing, Yerondai, said. Lord bless you, he answered. This is the greeting on Mount Athos. When you ask for the blessing, they answer, The Lord bless you. They know well the importance of Christ for the spiritual life. They also know their own weakness. The Lord is their desire and their true dwelling place. They often repeat His name since they live in His presence. He is the one who sleeps with them, gets up with them, sweetens and delights their heart through the consolation of the Holy Spirit. What are you doing there, Yeronda? Here, my son, I am trying to break this rock in order to make a small reservoir and collect the rainwater so that I can drink a little. Last year I suffered a lot from thirst. But this is very hard work, even more so without proper tools. What can I do? The body needs water. God will help me. We can have nothing here in the desert, but a little water is necessary. Come to the cell to bless it for us. Me to bless the cell of the blessed, I thought. The impure to bless the purified. I entered the cell discreetly, with great respect. You enter the cell of a hermit with awe as a place of mystery. It was dirty, neglected, but all these things are details for the spiritual athlete. How to find time for this sort of work? He brought me a little water and a Turkish delight, signs of his love. 
Indeed, in that desert you understand pure and sincere love. The whole heart of the monk is found on that small tray with a little water and the sweet. He offers you everything. Have you come from the world? Yes. How is it in the world? This is the usual question you hear on Athos. This time, however, it is of great importance. This is because the monk who asks left the world moving toward destruction fifty years ago and has not gone back. Also the ascetic knows well what the world means. It is the creation of God, yet at the same time it becomes the deceit of the devil. Didn't the devil deceive Adam by using his handiwork? How many of us do not suffer the same thing? The world, Yeronda, has gone far astray from God. It does not remember Him at all. Neither does it live in a way worthy of Him. The churches are empty and all the places of the devil are filled. People have left their spiritual fathers and have filled the mental hospitals. Their jobs give them anxiety and all their occupations are mundane. Today we have elections, tomorrow the fall of the government, the day after Congress. They read only newspapers and they are ignorant of the Bible. For hours they watch films inspired by the devil which put them to sleep. They don't learn of the lives of the saints. Oh, this unhappy world, the holy hermit said. The devil governs it. Daily he brings circumstances and events to steal away people's remembrance of Christ from the world. He causes people to stop looking inward at themselves and at their inner afflictions. He makes them more interested in focusing on other people, not on themselves. This escapism enhances the anxiety you talked about earlier. Adam sinned, hid himself, left God, and then all the sufferings followed. People do the same thing as well. I pray intensely for the salvation of the whole world. Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy upon me and upon thy world. All night I pray that God may show his mercy on the world. This is our mission in this disturbed age. The lot falls upon us to become martyrs. That hermit told me many things. When you visit Athos, you will hear this sort of wisdom at every step you take. I thanked him. I asked for his blessing. Asked him to remember me in his prayers and thoughtfully. I came out of the cell which is now his grave, yet from which he will be resurrected to the true life.